A normal approach to landing would be one where the winds are either calm or the winds are straight down the runway. A crosswind landing would be considered any time the, the wind would be coming from one side or the other. I like to think of an approach to landing in three phases. The first phase is your normal stabilized approach. A stabilized approach means that your nose is generally in, pointed in the same direction. It's not pitching up and down, and also your airspeed is stabilized on your final approach. The second phase is your level off. The level off is where you allow any excess airspeed to continue to bleed off or dissipate as the airplane is starting to settle to the runway. As soon as you feel the airplane start to settle from underneath you, as you reduce the throttle, when the airplane starts to settle underneath you is where you start to pull back pressure to get the pitch of the airplane's nose up just about to the tree line or the end of the runway. That allows the airplane to safely settle down on the main gear. You continue to hold back pressure and allow the nose to come down on its own when the plane can no longer produce lift. Let's look at what an approach and landing looks like with a crosswind situation. If the winds were from the front right, on final, your aircraft would have the natural tendency to want to yaw into the wind, or weather bang into the wind, because the way the tail sticks up. That's okay. Allowing the aircraft to yaw naturally into the wind, or weather bang into the wind, allows for a nice centerline ground track. But once you arrive at the runway, we can't let the aircraft touch down like this because you would destroy your landing gear. So what you need to do to correct this situation is you would have to apply left rudder to yaw the nose so your longitudinal axis would be aligned with your direction of motion. Remember the longitudinal axis was an imaginary line from the nose to the tail of the aircraft. So applying left rudder would correct that problem but now we still have another problem because the wind is going to try to drift your airplane off the runway. So therefore, we would need to apply right ailerons to prevent any drift. Too much aileron is going to cause your airplane to land on the right side of the runway, and not enough aileron would allow your airplane to land on the left side of the runway, and on, on touchdown would want to side load the aircraft. So it takes a lot of practice to develop this technique. You would apply left rudder and right ailerons, and land the airplane in this fashion. So in essence, you're landing on just one wheel. The left, the, you, in this scenario, you would land on the right wheel. The left wheel and the nose wheel will come down when the airplane can no longer produce lift. Now keep in mind, as you're transitioning through your approach, your level, and your flare, that the airplane's airspeed is slowing down, slowing down. So your controls become less and less effective. So it's very important to continue to put in more and more aileron input and more and more elevator input to get the same response out of the airplane. So as we come in and land, we would apply left rudder, right aileron, and allow the aircraft to touch down on the one wheel. The other wheel and the nose wheel come down when the airplane can no longer fly. In the meantime, you are continuing to apply back pressure and right aileron to prevent the airplane from side loading or drift. If the winds were off your front left, it would be just the opposite. The aircraft could uh, weather vane into the wind on final, and then when you arrive close to the runway, you would push right rudder and use left aileron and go into your level off, and then in the flare, allow the airplane to touch down on simply the left wheel. The right wheel and the nose wheel will come down when the airplane can no longer produce lift. So on a left crosswind landing, we should finish this landing with left ailerons and back pressure to safely land the airplane, keeping the longitudinal axis in the direction of motion and preventing any side load of the aircraft. Now, when you're still new at this, you may choose one other method, and they call it slipping the aircraft, where when you're still on final, you start to already correct for the wind. So maybe 200 feet from the ground, you're already applying rudder and aileron to try to get a feel of how you're going to end up touching down. Many pilots choose to just use the crab method and then correct at the end, and some pilots choose to start correcting early. If you do choose to start correcting early, you're actually creating more drag on your aircraft, so be ready with the power to correct in case the airplane starts to descend.